Hey guys, thank you for stopping by my channel. If you like the videos, then make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. If you want to leave any feedback, that's always appreciated down in the comments. And if you want to keep up with this series as well as my other projects, then go ahead and join our Discord, which is on the screen. Take care, nerds. Now on to the video. Hey guys, welcome back to episode 12 of my Discord JS series. And this episode, we're going to be continuing on the previous episode where we started talking about MongoDB and started setting up a bit of a foundation for going forward. I'm not going to go into much detail other than the few changes I made since the previous episode, but over in the top right, you can just go ahead and click or tap the info icon. You can go ahead and watch the previous video if you haven't. Anyways, let's talk about first some changes I made. So first off, I removed nmap. That and we talked about nmap earlier in the series, but the reason is I'm not really using nmap in this spot going forward since A, we're going to be using MongoDB for persistent storage and B, the main reason I kind of use nmap other than persistent storage is for the commands collection. But due to those reasons, I just removed nmap and instead I just brought in the collection class from Discord.js and we're just instead of new in-map, we're doing new collection. So that's what's going on there. Secondly, I create the client.config that variable and that just shoots right over to the config. And I'm doing this instead of requiring the config and all the files I'm using it, which is still the same as this, but using client.config is a little bit easier because instead of having the first require the config file in the new file and then gain that variable from the file, I can just do client.config.prefix or client.config.default settings and do it that way. And it just makes things a lot easier going forward. And you should always be trying to find new ways or nuances to make your code more simple. It doesn't always have to be that complex. And Every week, I'm you know trying to think of new ways or look into new ways to make my code more simple and more efficient. So that small thing saves a lot of time going down the road. Next is I added an eval command. An eval basically allows you to evaluate raw JavaScript code in your JavaScript application. So eval it takes in the argument here, which is just a code, and that'll just be a string. And first, we'll just eval that code and evaluate. Depending on your IDE, you might get an error saying, oh, about eval. And it's telling you that for a good reason. Because like I said in episode two about token security, eval is basically the same thing. And even sometimes it can be worse. So you should only make sure that the only people who have access to eval command is you, the bot owner. No one else should have it in the server because people can definitely use it for some malicious things and I've seen some bots go down and basically get nuked and servers getting nuked because of the eval command being exposed in one's code. Next, we're cleaning the, the eval evaluate code using the clean function here and it will clean any mentions uh, the client token, etc. So if someone runs the command, they can't just go ahead and get the client token. And honestly, this just popped in my head. Say if you have some database database credentials that is in client.config, maybe client.config.db.password. You can do the same thing here and just add, I don't know, dot replace client.config.db.password. And you can just do this or nerd or meme, just, you know, just something to keep in mind. But that's what the replace is for. So those are the changes that I have made since the previous video. Next, let's talk about going forward. So the first thing you see here is I filled up the, the rest of the functions here as well as add the new clean client.clean function here in the functions command. In this video, I'm not going to go ahead and go through and go explain the detail about each of these functions. 
But what I am going to do is, well, I suggest you go ahead and implement these functions in your code. You can go ahead to the GitHub in the description and get this code. But even though I don't have the comments in here right now, I'm going to add some extensive comments into this file on the different functions here, why I add these functions, and how these functions are going to affect your bot going forward. Because there's a reason why I built this, and that's because we're building a foundation here from the beginning. I know you know some of you guys may be new to Discord.js, and you have maybe have been following the series along for a while. If you have, you guys are awesome. But one of the main things we're doing here is building a foundation from the beginning. All the great skyscrapers and buildings have a great foundation. If the foundation doesn't hold, the whole tower or skyscraper comes crumbling down. So this is what this is about. And I know like you might be looking at this now, it might be a lot to take in, but that's why when you go over to GitHub, you're going to see all the comments that I put in this file so I can help give you guys the best understanding of what this code does. And you'll see what this code does in the future when we do some of the per server configuration, which is why I'm doing these MongoDB videos here. So this is what's going on in the functions command. And you know, here we take a different set of parameters and such. Now, before we do anything else, we want to make sure we can use these functions. So what you're going to do is you're just going to type in require. You're not going to sign anything else here yet, but you go into the utils folder and you're just going to get the functions file. And then, as you see, we export it client here. I'm going to add another parameter attached here, and you'll see client as it's expecting that parameter. And we're just going to type in client. Now, client.clean, client.getGuild, that can be used anywhere in the code. But that's just what's going on there. Next, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the guild schema. So I gave you guys a bit of an overview on the schema and what the schema means in the previous video. If you're confused about that, again, you can go back and watch the previous video. But you can also read this page here about models, which in this file, we're building a model for the, co the collection in the database, which is for guild and guild settings. But you can go ahead and read through this page. I'll leave this direct link in the documentation. We're also using defaults from the default settings object in the config. These default settings we define here in the config so we can put that into the schema and use it elsewhere in the code. And here, if you look at this specific property in the schema, it has another object. It has a type of string and a default, which is the guitarist here for this specific schema. And there are other object properties to this object that you can define, I believe. I'm not too sure on the specifics of that, but you can go ahead and take a look at the documentation and just get a feel for things a little bit more. Anyways, that's what we have here for the schema. And I have all the default sayings here in the data, data types and then the guild ID and guild name, which we have stored here. And next, we're going to set up an index file here in the models folder. This index file is basically entry point for all the different database models in this folder. In this folder. And since we only have one model, which is guild, we're just going to be exporting one in this object. So guild, I'm just requiring the file right here. And we're going to be using that in the guild create event. And if you go ahead in the docs, I'll show you in just a moment. Okay, so here we're looking at the guild create event. And this event is emitted whenever the client joins a guild. So it takes a one parameter and that's the guild object that's being passed through. And we're going to be using this a little bit later in the video to we're going to actually emit this event so we can create the default guild settings in a database. I'm not going to kick the bot and the react it again and go through that. But that's just to give you an idea of what we're doing with the guild create event. So I'm going to go ahead, create that event, and we'll start there. Okay, so we have the guild create event file here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in a try catch. And it's always good to um, handle errors as much as you can. It not only helps in development, but in production where you need to go ahead and track down what's going on. It may be easy to track down a bug or an error in development, but in production, it can be a little bit different depending on what you're doing sometimes and how that production environment is set up. And if you're kind of 
confused a bit what production environment is, what the development environment is. Development environment is like what you work in when you're building an application, and the production environment is what the application is actually running in. So just uh, we'll get more into that in the future when we talk about deployment, but just so you have an idea of what, we're, what I'm saying. So the first thing is we're going to create an object to pass through. And that object is actually being passed through here in the create guild command, which is the settings. This will be the object. So this object will have two properties. Guild ID, which is defined in the in the model, which would just be guild ID, and guild name, which would just be guild name then we are going to simply do await and we're going to do client dot create guild i'm going to go ahead and run that function and we're going to pass through this new guild object and make sure this function is async so we can properly use await and that's all you have to do so with that created um real quick I recommend you guys install NodeMod. You can just do that by, and you install this globally. npmi, which is installed, dash g, which is global, and NodeMod. NodeMod basically is, is great for development, and whenever you save a file, it automatically, re, automatically restarts the application. So you can just go ahead, run this command, and install it now. I already have it, so I'm not going to do that. But I'm just going to do NodeMod and start the application and we'll get back to you when this starts up. Small thing, make sure this is module.exports and not module.export because I was not able to set up. Start the bot right there. Anyways, since we have the eval command, I'm gonna go ahead and run eval and we're just gonna do client.emit. And I actually went over emitting events earlier in the series, but emit Emitting an event is basically the same as executing an actual event, but it's not the actual thing. It's just kind of testing what's going on. Anyways, I'm going to pass through the first parameter, which is the event name, and the second parameter, which is the guild. In this case, it's going to be this guild, so we're going to do message.guild. And we'll say true here at console. If you go ahead and check, it will say default settings have been saved for this guild. Make sure that you have MongoDB server running on your machine you can go ahead and well make sure you have it installed in the first place again check the previous video for that but just go down here go to mongodb and just make sure this says running if it's not right click it and just click start and it should start running anyways we're just going to go ahead and connect here to localhost and once you connect localhost you'll see all the databases that are on your computer if you are installed, if you have installed MongoDB for the first time, you won't see a lot of databases other than maybe admin, config, and local. That's basically it. But since I have other projects here that I have worked with or have worked on in the past, I have a couple more databases here. Just ignore that. All we're gonna be focusing on here is your database, which whatever you call it. In this case, I'll call it a Lincoln. Then we go to guilds, and then we see this was created in a database and all the settings has been merged such as a guild ID and guild name all the default settings from the config file so that's all set up now we're gonna go ahead and do one more thing let me close out all these files actually next thing we have to set the message event so here in the message event we're gonna do something a bit unique and again well not too unique but we're gonna pass through the settings into this file. And first off, we're gonna delete the default right here, prefix from the config. We're gonna create a new variable called settings. And we're not gonna, we're gonna resign this later here in the try catch. But let's go ahead and just handle this error. And here we're gonna just do settings equals await client.getGuild message.guild and then we'll just do settings.prefix 
settings.prefix. And like I said before about modularity, and we're just going to pass through the settings now as another argument for the command, meaning we can export and use the guild settings all throughout the different commands in the bot, which is great versus having to do the same thing, this and all the different files that you're trying to do, which I used to do instead in, until I started doing this. And it just, again, makes my code much simpler. So we're gonna go ahead, update this, and we're gonna check and make sure that we can use our prefix correctly from the database. Ping, pong. So that's it there. Next, we're going to set up a config command. And this config command is going to where all the settings are going to be configured. And we're going to do it instead of just per command, we're going to use a switch statement and we're going to use a couple different arguments. And I'll show you what I mean once we head over to the config command. Okay, guys, so I went ahead and set up the config command and I passed through all the different arguments here client message args and the new, argu new argument that we're using here, which is settings. And then this line, I set up a if statement here and we're basically checking the user's permission and to see if they have the manage guild permission. If they don't, we're simply gonna return. You can also add a message here. So it says you must have, or you don't have proper permissions whatsoever, but for tutorial purposes, I'm not gonna do that here. If you want to see a list of more diff of different permission flags, you can also check that here. Also, um, this doesn't just take a permission flag, it does take a permission resolvable. So you can add in a permission number here. And just to show you um, the different permission resolvable or permission number that you can set up, I'm gonna show you this website in one second. So if you come to this page, you can kind of set up different permissions to see the permission number. So administrator will be eight, uh, manage server, which would be the manage underscore guild will be 32. And you just mix and match a different set of permissions. And you can actually, instead of having manage underscore guild, you can just change this with a permission resolvable, right? Like that. But I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to use the permission flag, but it's up to you how you want to do it. Next, we're going to set up a few arguments. And I'm gonna show you how these arguments will work. If a user does config, they'll just see an overview of all uh, settings in the database. If they do config setting, see the current setting. If they do config setting, new setting, Oh, sets a new setting in the database. So this will be the overview of what we'll be working with here regarding the config command. So we're gonna set up a couple of variables. First being setting, and that's gonna be arg zero. And then the next argument will be the new setting. And we're gonna slice that arguments to path since we have arg zero and I'm just going to join the strings together just like that. Then we're going to use a switch statement here and we're going to switch through the setting. So welcome role, welcome channel, uh, welcome message, uh, mod role, admin role, stuff like that. But for starters, we're going to stick with the prefix command. So we just do case prefix. Then we're going to do default and what I may end up doing for this is I actually might have to test something out with this for a moment. So give me a moment, guys. What I'm deciding to do for simplicity is I'm just going to do message.channel.send and if they don't provide anything, I would say please provide a setting to view slash update. And we'll just do it that way. So for the prefix command, first thing we're gonna do is if no, if this argument is, isn't provided, just like as we show here, we'll simply show what that setting is in the database. So if we'll do if no new setting return, 
message.channel.sin and I'm going to do uh, those back ticks here so I can just do setting.prefix then I have to try catch and we'll just do message.channel.sin or just send an error in chat and error occurred and we'll just display the error message then here we're going to do await client.update guild we'll pass message like guild as the first parameter then the second parameter we're going to provide an object and this we're going to do prefix and it's going to be new setting then we're going to send a message prefix has been updated to I'm going to say prefix updated. Okay, and we'll do setting that prefix to make sure that when it returns, it's providing the correct prefix. So, right now, our current prefix is this. Well, that's fantastic. Settings. Current prefix is this. And if we do config prefix, and let's change it to the chevron right here. Okay. What actually we're just going to do is we're just going to get the uh, new setting. So if we do config prefix, config prefix then we do a ping that works but if we do a ping here that doesn't work so that's is the overview of how the switch statement is going to set is going to be set up now what you can do is you can add in more switch statements based on the settings here in the database so you can add a, a, a case for the admin role the mod role the welcome message welcome channel you can even add in verification to make sure they provide these parameters in a welcome message because these will be replaced in the future with the these will be replaced in the future with the actual user in guild and all you have to do is just create a new case statement you'll go ahead make sure you add break and hold on sorry guys my siblings just got home but all you have to do is add in a new case statement and this can be welcome channel. You can do a welcome message and more. I'm not going to add those all in to this video, but I kind of have a bit of a challenge in mind, which I will introduce at the end of next video, which is going to be based on using Git and GitHub. So you can actually publish and up push your code to an online repo and use version control and things like that. I'll get more into details in the next video, but I think I'm going to end it off here. And like I said earlier in the video, make sure to check out the GitHub and go take a look at the functions file where I'm going to be going in depth into, the, into detail on how all these different functions work and why I set up the functions the way they are. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Make sure to check the description for all the links. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, nerds.